I saw him at Hammersmith years ago. And do you know what is so random? I saw Little Wayne at a flipping area nightclub, bro. In what? Watford, yeah, yeah. Then Little I saw, I saw, Wayne yeah, was yeah, at yeah. area nightclub? Yeah, yeah, so I think, I don't know, look, I don't want to get this wrong, no, but I remember at the time when he was here, he was with um, the North, some, like, I don't know if it was North Star, but I know he's with some North youths. Yeah, 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 <laughs> even if you them. got it right, you got it wrong. Huh? Even if you got it wrong, you got it right. It was with North people, I like it was, that. Yeah. Evil, yeah. yeah, but he was definitely with them man, Come yeah. On. Now, I don't know if he was, um, I don't know if he was there to perform or whatever, but I just remember, it's weird. Okay, so let me just like paint the picture here, yeah? Go on. So, with Area Nightclub, obviously you've got like the, the, the dancing area or whatever, the DJ bit is on a riser. Yeah. To get to that riser, you've actually got to go like almost like backstage, but there's nothing really there. It's yeah. like, it literally looks like a fucking, I don't know, it just looks like a hall. It looks like th here. Where we are right now. Okay. Like, literally, there's nothing there. You just walk, walk that little hallway, yeah? So, imagine I've come out of the like of the DJ booth. I've come down, because I'm about to go into the crowd kind of thing. I see little Wayne and, and bared flipping North Youth. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, and a couple of security, man. Crazy, bro. Do you know what? Crazy. It's, you know, like, it's things like that which makes you realise, wow, man's got stories, you know? Bro, <laughs> I, I swear actually, down. Fam, I remember when... To, right, the thing was, I thought head. I saw it and then I, was, I eradicated it from my mind, and then my good friend TJ reminded me that it happened. What's that? That Destiny's Child were in Finsbury Park. What? In like 1999. Doing what? Doing, I think they were in PAX. Or something like, like a hair shop. Really? Like, brother. Early on. People don't realize, you see early, early on, yeah. before all of this, anything black over here was just in the hood more time. Yeah, I true. swear down, they weren't really central London vibes like that. They were no. just accessible places. Didn't Messi go to Hackney as well at one point? But that was like, you that's know, different thing, that's yeah. a different thing. Yeah, when, helicopters and whatever. Yeah, but before social media, Destiny Child in Finsbury Park. It's a different thing. I think it was off the back of their first album, I reckon, or their second album. They were in Finsbury Park and it was just... I do like it though when people go, when you hear about stories of like people being in places you wouldn't necessarily expect them to be. Like 50 Cent and Dr. Dre celebrating their birthday or celebrating Dre's birthday in Tottenham. In a Somalian restaurant. Right. And then he, he also that. went to the... Shout out East Africa. He went to the one in... Was there one in Southall and that as well? Is it either Southall or Hammersmith? He, he went to one... Is it, where's, where's Brothers? What's that? Brothers is a Somali um, restaurant. Not to, I'm not saying that you would... Not, but I thought you might know. So he just pointed at you and said that you know. I know where Village is. Village? He, did, he, did he go Village? Where's Village? Yeah. Is that the one in Hammersmith? Yeah, okay, cool. I went Village, you know. Yeah, village, village is nice. cold. Yeah, oh, village. you know what? Big up village. I tell you what, while we're here, go on. Big up the one in um, Acton. Find that one. Which one? The one in um, Acton High Road. Somalia, Somalia food. Yes. yes. Go go there quickly. Imagine oh. I've gone there now. Gone. I went there with um with Hanif. Gone there. Flipping, it's busy outside. Bear girl out there as well, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> he's like, oh, um, I said to the guy, what like? Sabi. Food palace. I think it's... Where is it? On Acton High Road. On Acton High Road. I think it's Sabib. Click yes. on it. Click on it. I want to give them a proper shout out still. It's on the High Road. Yeah, go out. Come out. Yeah, boom. Come down. Can you not see a picture of it outside? I'm trying. Uh, while you're getting it. So anyway now, flipping. I've gone there. Mm. I said to the guy, look, how, like, how long's waiting? And he's not giving me a time, in it. But it's cool. He's saying, don't worry. Just wait. You can get a table. Then he goes to be held on, mate. Old man, by the way. Not old, but older. He goes to me, I've seen you. You, be, you talk about Somali rice a lot, don't you? And I said, yeah. I said, I do. He's like, I'm going to get you a table. You know what? 20 minutes later, I got, my, I got me a table. There are people outside got me a table. See what happens. Show yeah, love yeah, to yeah, the yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. They show it back. He was nice, man. Got, got me some tea. The food slapped in there. Is this the place? I just want to make sure. I don't want to give. And if we got the wrong place, I don't want, I'm going to mute their name. Is it next to Acton Mosque? Not far from Acton Mosque? Yeah, it's right in the mosque, yeah, I believe. Yeah, there it is. Sabib, yeah? All right, cool. If I've got it wrong, then we're going to mute every time I've said Sabib because I don't want You're these right. up to get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want these up to get it, respectfully. Well, and then we'll just put on the bottom that it's these lot. But I think it was them. Big up them. And yeah. if you ever fancy going down there, go get the lamb. The lamb ting, mad. Crazy. Oh, Po, we got to go there. Serious? Is lamb your ting? Lamb is my... Lamb chop. Bro, I'm don't telling you we're going to go there. Shank, bro. Huh? Lamb shank. Yeah, yeah. Their lamb shank is mad. Lamb shank, full off the bones. Full of the and soft. Oh, you, I thought you was correcting me. I got defensive. 
No, no, no. Shout out, yeah. It's from North, that's what I'm saying. It's from North. What's going on, bro? You're North, man. We just got uptight. What are you doing? Yeah, nah, man. Honestly, Lamb is my thing. I won't lie. Red um, Meat's my thing again, so I'm back over here, man. Rihanna was in a, uh, uh, a yard food shop. Where? Oh, wait. She was but, getting a trim or something like that one yeah, time as yeah. well. And everyone was outside whilst... This thing, yeah? By the way. That's the place. Yeah. That's the place. It looks crisp. It's listen. It is crisp. It's yeah. Like super like proper presentable and stuff like that. Really nice. Really nice. Good staff. Food very well cooked. It's proper. You love. I love seeing stuff like that. Look at that. I mean, you the food don't I always like come like that. That. Shout them out, man. But big them up though. Wait, got have, have you got a picture well. of the lamb? Have you got a picture of the lamb there? Yeah, go and find a picture of the lamb. The lamb is mad, bro. We the, got PK and Hamza who always tell me about Somalian food and advise me to go and get some in Tottenham as well. So they, they stay advising me, PK and Hamza. Yeah, yeah. So Just go to like anyone that you... See like if you've got a brethren that you trust. Yeah. Like go to that. But there's like... There's there's really popular ones like Village and Brothers. Um, and I don't know how popular this one is. But when I went there... That's the lamb, yeah, with the, oh my God, poet. See this thing look here? that, man. With the rat, it's crazy. I you know, promise you, bro. Look at that. It's you, crazy. Look at the colours. Sorry, the colour. Look at the colours. It's it crazy. looks inviting. It's crazy. Chucky, that says, respectfully, eat me. Yes. I will. I'm telling you. We'll go there. We'll definitely go there for Look at sure. my girlfriend. Just say, eat me. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I you know what? Up. Talking of that, some God. people are eating in the wrong places. My brother, I think... I think my man... Let's go there. What was the one before again? Who's the guy that done it? Dominic. Dominic has been let off the fucking... Yeah, Dominic Selec never... Dominic to Selec bits! Selec. Yeah. Goodbye. Yes. Dominic Selec, goodbye. Because you know what? I like where he done it now. Huh? I like where he done it now. Who, what, what Dominic? Yeah. I'm Outside, not mad at it. Outside, I'm not mad I'm not at, mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at it. Oh, I'm not mad at that. Because a toilet... We can unpack that, actually. I'm not mad at the, the stairway. I'm not. Because the stairway holds a mystery of it might be dirty. Like, you know it's dirty, but it might not. It might, that's how I feel in my mind. I know that's crazy. But you see a toilet? I know it's dirty. That's crazy. Let me I something. know it's dirty. I know. I'll go, I'll go one further. I'll go one further. The stairway has cultural significance. Chat to them. You see, when you come from an estate, we hang around in a stairway. Come on. Yeah, we're familiar with that. Yeah. Man, them do that all now. That's all yeah? at home. That's part. It's, it's furniture. There's so eating panan bread on a stairway is not that mad. A toilet, we don't hang around in a toilet. We don't have conversation. We don't even, people barely speak on the phone on the toilet. Take away the sexual innuendo from it and take a look at it as eating. I would eat on a staircase. Yes. If I got a little, yes. do you know where I'm coming from? I would go and get my little Somalian food from Salibs or Sabibs? Sabibs. Sabibs. And I would sit down on a staircase eating my Sabibs. It's Somali, man. Some I do apologize. I'll eat my Somali food from Sabibs on the staircase. No one can't tell me nothing. Strong. But would I eat my Somali Sabibs on a toilet? <laughs> no. That doesn't feel right. I'm not gonna eat my Somali Sabibs on the toilet. You can nah, not. that doesn't feel right at all. Chuck, what did you think when you saw it, please? I thought it was a joke. Oh, serious? Yeah, at first I thought it was a joke. Sorry, what are we talking? Oh, okay. oh, oh, wait. Yes. oh people are you know. at the loops? Sorry, everyone. Chuck, yeah, go, got you. No, you go for, it. go for it. Do you know what? It was a howler, but now that we're here, let's bring it up. So there was a young man. I don't know his name. I don't it even want to say his name. a viral moment, though. I don't want to say his name, but I think... I feel bad for him. So I'm going to go and Has get he owned right it right now. Has he owned it? Has he owned it? He don't have a choice. Has he owned it? Big man... Bro, he <laughs> looks starved. Let me tell you something, bro. yeah. Are you ready for this? Because I've got all the videos. <laughs> They've got angles. Are you trying to find it? Yeah, the poet said he sent it in the house. Wait, is there's angles? I've only seen one angle. Oh, don't worry. I'll send it all to you right now. To so basically, fair, a young man, just to get long story short, there was a guy in the club and he was eating out a female in the toilet. Um, what makes it even more interesting is the fact that he went to have sex with her and she said, no, eat it. And he didn't even really hesitate. He just <laughs> she said opened up first, his mouth. And this is the young man here. As you can see... Oh my god, he looks familiar as well. Oh shit, bro. And the thing is, he's got the designer jacket on, the shades, he looks sensational. I'm like, go on, my brother, do your thing. And then he's eating in the toilet. And he's doing it from an angle. He's eating from an angle. My brother, I want him to know I have no problem <laughs> no, with the no, eating. No. Wait, do you know what? It's mad. Oh no, Chuck, you got your phone. Yeah, but he actually, I uh, might be this. But he looks like um, Young'un's manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
go to your phone yeah. because do you know what that's usually that's usually a point like that's crazy that's a strong yellow right, go to your phone I'll send you texts so you can see angles and you Chucky yes I can put them on screen, you can do whatever you like you are TI you got the whole thing. oh my god bro did no one wait did he not know that no one was filming this did it I, apparently this was 12 drinks in you might not care He's in, a, in a, he's in a hunger Bro, took over. Look at the way that he's finger banging her. He's punching it. This is nuts. Brother. This is crazy. Crazy. What, they were so in this that they did not know that he got a rollie on. Brother, do you know what to be honest with you, yeah? I, I've watched Look the, at the way that he, bro, God. the finger banging is nuts. The technique. The he's, technique is crazy. He's punching her up. Yeah. Can we give a howler to the, to the person who filmed They did not no. know. Wait, did she not know? Ah! How do you not see? I just got No, 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 look. He goes to take it out. He goes to take it out and she goes, no. Eat me. Eat me. I'm wearing blue. Eat me. And I'm on my reds. That's Bloods and Crips. Eat me. I love a woman who, who demands though. Um, I like that. I do, but I don't at the same time. Now they must know what's going on. They're in a different world. They, they have to no, look. There's they're a twelve right drinks there. deep, bro. You know when you're tw- have you been twelve drinks deep? No, I, do you know what, Poe? I hear that, but don't, don't your senses <coughs> twelve <coughs> drinks? I'm talking. You're aware of it, and it's funny when it's twelve drinks. He ain't even taken off his blazer. He hasn't even washed his hands. Like, you're meant, there's loads of things you're meant to do before you eat. No, this but, whole thing. No, and also... You don't, wait, wait, wait. Just be clear. When you're finger banging, you don't you don't wash your hands like before you chop. That's you do you it afterwards. Eat. I'm talking about for food. I wash my oh. hands before I eat food. You chop in the toilet, though. Huh? You chop in the toilet, right? I have chopped in the toilet. Oh, but you wouldn't eat food in the toilet. No. All right. On the toilet I told seat. you, uh, again, you're making it about sex. What did I say at the start? Yeah. Take away the sex. I don't eat food in the toilet. How about that? I've never had sex in the toilet, but I wouldn't, I, I would. I had sex in Coco's toilet. Really? <laughs> like a year ago. That's crazy. Come on. Nah, I like that. I think sex in the toilet is more about, and then, yeah, we. I, I think we can find a conversation somewhere in there, a constructive one later on. But I think it is more about the thrill more right. than anything. Of course, it wasn't like- This go. wasn't a thrill thing, this was hunger. Hunger <laughs> Games, <laughs> this, brother. This was, this was hunger. This was the McDonald's drive through is 45 minutes away. I don't know if I can wait. Yeah, yeah. He was starving. But you know what it is, yeah? So cheap, Yeah, so oh, cheap. Shit. Yeah, do you know what? You're right. I'm, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm <laughs> I don't I know. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Go. She's an OG. I'm sorry. I don't know. There's so many times a man them get head in the toilet and they're like, yeah, 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 that girl was whatever. We never really make reference to the guy. So this time around, I'm going to make it a reference to the girl. The guy, you were hungry. She's not hungry. She ain't eat nothing. She's just laid there talking like a bad bee. My guy was in there punching up a pom pom, you know, eating it like it's rice and peas and chicken or sabibs. I just didn't. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I hear it. <laughs> Do you know what? I agree. Because she's got the aura of a woman who just looks like, you know what? I consent to this, but I'm okay if it doesn't happen. But it is what it is. She's just leaning back. She's taking the finger banging well. But then it's like, you know what? <laughs> You know, when he's ready now, because he's starving, she's like, nah, I'll eat. She wants to see what she can get out of this first before he ends, He starts trying to plow her into, into town. She's smart. She's thinking to herself, listen, if this all goes tits up, let's at least say I enjoyed myself a little piece because if this all goes online and I'm just getting beat, it looks But like, if, if that's sex on camera, it looks bad right. for both parties. Yeah. If that's getting on camera... Dominic Soler. What's the girl's name in Dominic Soler? We don't we don't even know. This is my point. Yeah. She's the winner in blue. Feels Wait, right. Man she City. um I heard she left the country or whatever, but that could all be hearsay. What, she left the country? Yeah. yeah. That was a big thing. How long ago was that? Like For people who don't some people might not even know what we're talking about with that. Dominic Sinclair, Sinclair, whatever. Soler. Soler. He was this was after New Year's Eve. This was New Year's Eve. 2020. 2014, I want to say 2014 or 2013. One and then around two. that time, yeah. Um, 
he was caught eating banana bread on the to- in the, on the stairway in Leighton. somewhere. Yeah, and that was a in big, East London. That was like a massive, massive viral moment. That was. And you know what's so nasty about it? They found out the girl works in Lab Brooks. They found out the Lab Brooks she works in or something like that. Then the guy, how they even found out his name? And they even found Dominic Soler three years ago, I believe, on the train. Did they just? But he's minding his own business. He was sitting there like Dominic. He went to chase the guy off the train. Dominic, what I think you should do is turn the whole thing into a joke. Do you know what? The- <laughs> turn it into a joke. Like, but, like, yeah. okay, isn't that the part where it is like, people are doing, I know you can say he did too much, but isn't that the part where people just do too much? Can't we just look at the moment, laugh, joke, get our jokes off, maybe even get our serious critiques off, and then just leave it as that? Why do we need to know where she lives, where he lives, where they work, where this is, where that is? We've seen them later on down. Why do we need to know all of that? Why not? Because they should just be able to just live their life in privacy. So then why didn't they do that in the comfort of their own bedroom then? Because they was lost in the moment. Well, then guess what? So is everyone else. Yeah, so what I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying, <laughs> why can't we get lost in the moment in the moment? Because why has the moment got to carry on for a couple of years? It wasn't our moment. They can get lost in the moment. We're witnessing their moment. That moment meant a lot to you. It means more to us. Let's expand it. Let's expand it. But I'm saying that we should expand it as the jokes and that for a couple yes. of days. Nah. But after that, it shouldn't like the where they work, like where they work, where they live, and that. Isn't it a bit? Ain't it a bit a lot? Of course it is. But this is the reasons why you do not eat a girl on a staircase in Leighton, the home of Jammer. This doesn't feel right. Yeah, you deserve to be. You just whatever it. happens. Yeah. How you can you eat then a girl? Then shamed for a lack of composure. Yeah. I hear it still. You know what? And what it probably does do is if we only looked at it for the moment, it would encourage people to do more of that. So now we're letting mm-hmm. you know, even a decade later, Dominic Soler, we still remember your name. I know. And you know what? Like I said, it's because Even of when you. you just hear the word Dominic, the well, name Dominic, you just think of my man. If I see DS, I think Dominic Soler. Yeah. If I see food on a staircase, I think Dominic oh. Soler. But in hindsight, his thing wasn't that bad. Nah, not when you take a look at a guy. Well, you don't see this. What's no, this guy's name, by the way? I don't even know. Exactly. Huh? We'll find out soon. We'll find out soon. What I will say is, nice jacket. I like the fact that you went out to the club to enjoy yourself. I just think maybe eight drinks is your limit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was well presented. Yeah, he dressed really well in that. Do you know what I'm coming yeah. from? He dressed like he had composure. <laughs> you know what it is? This is a serious thing though. And I'm not saying this as disrespect to my man, but like a lot of people are not having sex like that, you know? What do you mean? Like. Oh, they're not really having sex. They're like, not know, really having sex. Do you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. I'm not going to get into names. Someone told me that, uh, he re- someone someone told me recently, two people stopped, stopped talking because one guy slept with his ex-girlfriend or something like that. And they were like, how could you do that? How could you do that? And the guy's a gallus and the other guy is not. And I said to him, well, there you go. If you get sex quite frequently, um, obviously under consent, from multiple females and so on and so forth, then I think you could, you're could. you more likely <coughs> to pass an opportunity on it. Because people speak about it quite consistently. People treat it like this, the holy grail. If you're privy to that, you don't mind a couple of times not getting it. Now, mm. if you're a man that either didn't get gal when you were younger, only get gal now because of your name or because yeah. you got money or something like that, that means all of these sexual experiences that more time people have as kids like having sex outside and all of that, you're having it now. Yeah. So you're probably more prone to jumping on board something like that because you, you don't even know the value of it too tough because you're not really being involved like that. Yeah, now, yeah, obviously, yeah. principals should get involved, but when the body talks... No, you need want to just dive in. But I think like for the average... I think it's very difficult for the average man yeah. to just have sex like that. That might be one of the reasons why some men are so starving for it. Because it's like... Obviously, the feeling of busting your nut, I mean, it's an incredible feeling a lot of the time, yeah? But then also, it's the thing of, like, doing it with somebody, but you can't, you just can't... Okay, maybe what's, what is a good equivalency? It's like, it's just, it's like the almost the taboo thing, the thing that you, you want and that people are having, but you can't get much of. So the, but, so the moment that you can't get much of it, you want even more of it. God forgive me for saying this, man them, if you're not having sex regularly these days but you want to, you are fucking rubbish. You are rubbish. Go, why? In my era, we had to work, Chucky. 
yeah. we know about going on the bus seeing a gal you're thinking oh you're nice you're taking out your bus pass i'm picking up a pen and i'm saying yo baby what MSN, like mm. this, you know, those are the days. Okay. And then I've got to go home and nudge you and talk. The build up to finding out any information is small. There's no social media. I can't see what you done yesterday, what you had for breakfast, what you plan to eat for dinner. I don't know any of that. So I have to have conversation based upon minimal information. So that build up to get in the situation, you know, where you have sex, you worked for it, you earn it. They, you both earned it. It was a good conversation. You knew each other. You trusted each other a little bit. Like there was more work put in. Whereas nowadays, niggas are just going to Selfridges, looking at the mannequin, putting on that outfit, looking at a Drake caption or a Drake bar, putting as their caption, bit of gold. I've gone to Dubai for the weekend, and all of a sudden now <laughs> you can just chop. You can no, chop. No, I hear. No, am I, think, I lying? No, you're facts. I think yeah, there's an argument to say that back then, in the time that you were talking about, and even before that, yeah. was harder. But also, you have to like. Take yourself out of the uh, out of this equation here, yeah? Because you do have a certain... Forget about what you've done in your life anyway in regards to work. You have a certain level of confidence and a thing about you that you've had from when you was young. See, like, there's a lot of people that don't Shout have that. Dad. Yeah, so, that's probably where you got it from, yeah. There's a lot of people that don't have that. They okay, don't have the... that. That was that was a thing for me, bro. Yeah, you but see back me? in the day, I could talk. Yeah. My, my my gift was I could talk. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? I could talk, but I wasn't always that good at transitioning from the talking to the banana bread. That was an art that I had to really learn. Yeah, yeah? Art we but, all had to learn. Yeah, of course. But you know what? Like, I think for the average person, it's difficult for them to like. To learn how to transition and do all of that, yeah, but take yourself out of it. All right, bro. cool. I'm let's, talking about the average person. Let's talk, the let's average look, person is cool. not chopping because it is difficult to chop. Let's look at people as clans, as like groups. Yes. You got the footballers, you yeah. the footballers, the rappers. You got the podcasters that chill around. And then you can make it even. You got the sweet boys. You got the gangsters. Mm. You got the football hooligans. Everyone's in their particular demographic and their group. And so are the girls. No disrespect to the girls. Mm. You have the girls that take work very seriously and they're just about mm. their work and this and that and so on and so forth. But they like a little sneaky. And they let you know through their work sometimes. They might say a couple of things and so on and so forth when they drop little sexual innuendo. That's, an, that's someone saying to you, I might be open to having that conversation. And I'm saying to you, back in the day, I didn't see any of that. Mm. I literally have to have a conversation with you and work you out by speaking to you. I have no additional information. I'm saying people have additional information from females that might might be more prone to having sexual conversations or that type of fun because they advertise everything. So if you're taking a look at the advertisement, you can take a look at what they're advertising. I'm not saying it's always going to be right, but you'll have a better idea than our day. Like, if someone's always raving, always doing these types no, of yeah, like yeah, social... I, I, get where you're, I get where you're going. Do you know where I'm coming from? So, like, they're kind of advertising what type of lifestyle they would like. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can definitely have sex with them. No. But if I'm watching one person, all they're focusing on is their picnic and this degree that they're going for and their job, I'm not looking at that as the candidate to say they might want to go away for a week and have a bit of fun. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So, mm. I think the information is easier to... I, I get what you're saying about the information. Without being disrespectful. But like, also going back to the average person, there are certain people. Let's say, for example, now, yeah, there are certain men, young men in particular, that work from Monday to Saturday. Okay. Yeah, cost of living in that is it's hard out here. Crazy. Yeah. Some people run businesses, but that again, I'm, that's I don't even want to take it into a small percentage of people. Talk about average person, yeah, and they may, they might work in the line of let's say gas. So in their day to day, or let's say plasterers. In their day to day, they're just not even encountering women like that in the first place. Anyway, now I know you could go on social media, yeah, but then like again, take us out of the equation. equation. In, in our social media, because of how we use our social media, we are going to have people that are going to come and oh, he's funny, oh, he's really smart, oh, this is good. Like it, we we give people a reason to want to follow. But the average gas, electric Don or whatever, just the average Don, he's on there just trying to get a follow back. Can't get a follow back because he's not. He might not be a lookers lookers like that. But he might have all the conversation in the world. But already, it's not even the lining right now. So already, the line of work means that he's not going to meet women so much. Hey, hey, then on top of that, on social media, 
it's it's hard to transition from the average guy is probably finding it really difficult to transition from fifteen followers to. 300 followers or a thousand followers which has got yeah there you go <laughs> which has got you. a couple of gal in there that you can might might be able to reason with do you know what i mean like so then like and this is the this is the foundation of it here and i know that maybe what we're talking about is like no, we're just talking right. about sex here and whatever but even in terms of like relationships i think that it does seem it does seem as though it's easier now but i think that people actually just don't know where to go to meet each other these days, ironically enough. People, I hear people say that all the time, like, where do I go? Yeah, but that's because- Some people might say, oh, let's go to Chucky's dance or whatever, we might go and meet someone. But do you know what, to be honest, we just pull up a girl. So- <laughs> I'll go. No, no, Chuck, no, I'm joking, Chuck. I'm joking, I'm joking. Let's have it Do you know right. what I'm saying? I actually understand fully where you're coming from. And essentially, you are right. But for the purpose of podcast and conversation, let's break it down a little bit more. Let's go. I think myself, personally, the reasons why that problem occurs, so away from what we're speaking about, keeping what we're speaking about, how difficult it's interacting, is that I didn't find anything. Chucky, if I'm like this, where's my keys? I go looking for them. Let me find them. I don't feel this way about women. I never go, where's the woman? Let me go look for her. I'm just living my life. And fortunately for me, things happen. So I think it's the, maybe you're right. Maybe the average guy's mindset is too focused on what society says we have to have. A missus, nice job, couple kids, is a dog, is a cat, don't eat the goldfish. Like, if that's the vibe, then I get it. But my, I, my brother's outside, just live life, my guy. You do not have to look for something that's not lost. Don't be out here looking for women. That doesn't make sense. Look for yourself, you're probably lost. And eventually- Someone looking for companionship. Yeah, but don't look for it, it's not lost. You only look for things, like if you go looking for something, it's lost. I don't go looking for my kids when I go to well, see not them. not necessarily, if you're hungry and you're looking for food, you haven't lost food, you're just looking, looking for- Looking for food. I, I mean, I've never said someone's <laughs> gone looking for food. That, that's, that's crazy. No, but you might- Let's but, go restaurant. You're not looking for it, you're going to the restaurant. Are you hungry? No, but, yeah, no, but what restaurant might, should we go for? Yeah, but okay, right. say we left the pod now, and we're like, can we go and get food? We might go on to Labrador Highroad. Because we're lost. We don't know what to eat. No, Let's go we ain't, find we ain't lost. To eat. We ain't lost. That's we're, lost. No, we're going on the high road yeah. to figure out what we're going to eat. Because we're lost in our mind of what to eat. So let's go find something to eat because we're lost in thought. What do you think? I think chicken. I think this. I think... We don't have a clue. We're lost in thought. I hear that. But I'm talking about a woman. She's not lost. She is wherever the hell she is. She can't be lost in your thought. It doesn't belong to you. It's not food. You're not going to buy it. It's a woman. So there's no loss in this equation. This is, let's just live life. And eventually, I'm telling you, it just happens the way What do you think about manifestation then? I don't know where <laughs> I am with that. What do you think about manifestation? Some people would say, Go on. I'm looking for companionship, so I'm gonna pull it out in the air that I'm looking for companionship. And I respect that. And I wanna see how many I'm looking for companionship to end of successful relationships before I make an estimate. Because I don't understand that concept. Because again, I put my best foot forward. You know what my best foot forward is? What? Me. And then once I put my best <laughs> foot forward, I expect- <laughs> <laughs> so dumb, bro. That just, I just, yeah, that, con that concept is so, Confusing, but then when you say what you say about the average man, maybe the average man's thinking pattern, thought process is as far as house, wife, kids. So therefore they're always looking for the right job, looking for the right missus, looking for the right dog. I think that's scary. Bro. No, 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 no. Do you know what? It's not even, it's, I think it's just the way that the society has changed. Because do you know what? Like maybe there's an argument to say that it was easier back in the day purely because of but pre, like pre-internet times or whatever, mm. people just lived in their com communities and it was just the thing to do. You just, you know what? Once you leave home, you get a job, like you might get a trade. Mm. And most men would get a trade. And then in that, a woman would get her job or whatever it may be. But then like you would meet somebody or it, you'd be introduced to somebody or whatever it is, you'd meet them wherever you meet, met them. And then the woman would be at home, she'd have the child, the, the dad would be outside working or whatever. And that was just the thing that would just go on and go on for, for decades until we got to a point in the internet age where some people were like, well, no, hold on one second, that might not be right. Uh, sometimes some women have said, no, but we want to work and we want to do this and we want some equal stuff and we want yeah. some that. <laughs> 
Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some men have said, you know what? Well, I want my woman to look like this. I want my woman yeah, to look yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know, true. all of that's these true. things started changing up and whatnot. Now we're in this big gray area where if you say that you want a traditional relationship, people feel like you're going crazy because they just think that's a toxic thing. But sometimes some people think if you want a new age relationship, some people want new age relationships with only elements of old school old school yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, There's like a lot yeah, of picking yeah, and choosing yeah, yeah. going on. So now I think what's probably happened is we've gone into a big, massive grey area here where no one don't even really know so much of what they want. All they know yeah. is is just I just would like to meet somebody, but they don't even really know what they want. Whereas back then everyone kind of knew what they want. Whether we agreed with it or not, Different this was story. just the, how people lived within their community. So it's difficult now because the it's just, everything's just really wide open anyway. It's crazy because it's almost like, back in the day it was very tribal and you listen to your tribe and you yes. it yeah, 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 yeah. Now everyone's socialising and you're hearing other stuff from other tribes and you're hearing that some of the things you've done in your tribe is actually not good. Yeah. So you look for, for ways to sort of like repair that sort of mess, so to speak. And now you've got these situations here where I know one girl that told me she's a Muslim and she went to church on Sunday. So I, I don't really know what's going on with anyone or what's <laughs> going on with people. But I just advise not to look for things that are not lost. It reminds me of when Christopher Columbus said he discovered certain countries that were always there. This doesn't make so... If you discovered it, the people that were there, what did they do? So I don't really get all of this. And this girl that you say is lost or whatever, when you meet her, does she say thank you for finding nah, me? No, but you know, it's... I, hear, <laughs> I, I don't nah, know. I just think yes, they like, do. What? Yes, they do, actually. They do. Yeah. They actually do. <laughs> Until they get the I thank well. God I found you. You no hear that? Like, I'm so, I'm so happy that we are to get... Like, I've been searching and searching and searching. You don't hear these in wedding vows and things. I do. See it You're there? Right. But again, I just I, I don't agree with all of them because I think words, I just look at words and I just think words are so important and imagery. Imagery is important, you but know. But then what, if words are so important, then you, surely you must lean to elements of manifestation. No, words are only... Words are important because I think they condition my... So I hear where you're coming from, but it's like you still have to act Are they the important word. or they're not? I huh? don't know. I don't know. Because I just don't, I don't think I have the influence to manifest something that doesn't have anything to do with me. So I don't well, believe I can say something and it will make me involved in someone else's whole life and so existence. Like, I don't have that. I don't know if it's level of ego or I just don't believe in that. I believe in me. I believe in I can say something and I can put it into action and I can make it happen. Outside of me, I don't believe in anything like that. That's why I'm like, put your best foot forward, whether it's your right or left. And then after that, God will take care of the rest, man. This sort of, I'm looking for, I just think it's crazy. I genuinely think it's crazy. Even, do you know what makes it worse as well? Sorry to keep going. I think we live in this catalog era where if you consistently see something over and over again, you're going to believe that's a sense of reality or that's what you want or that's what you need. So time Christmas time, Chucky, I picked up the Argos catalog and I looked at it every single day. Could you see that PS2? Everyone in my house needed to know I wanted it. Or PS1, whatever it was. And I kept looking at it. That's my PS. That's my PS. Imagine today. Man's at home. I want a girl. You pick up your phone. You go to Instagram. Be a relationship. Be a girl. You go to Twitter. Be a relationship. Be a girl. You switch on your television. It's reality TV. Be a people getting together. Everything is bloody relationships. You go outside. You see... Cu it's so embloodied in your mind. You just think, I need to find a girl. Because it looks like everyone else has got one. Yeah, but do you know what? No? I hear, I, look, I I agree with the words that you're saying, mm -hmm. but I think that you are being too literal. Possibly. So like, Possibly. when sometimes when when people say that they want to find a girl, they don't mean it in that sense. Sometimes some people just aspire so to says, be. Sometimes so some people mean? just aspire to be in a relationship. It doesn't mean that they will you know, go out and be like, okay, cool, I need to go and find. But it's just, you know what, like, at some point, I would like to be in a relationship. I'd like I'd like to have some type of companionship. It doesn't mean, though, I if like somebody... That. Huh? I like that. If someone is aspiring to be in a relationship or aspiring to have a family dynamic or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that something has, is lost in their life. It's just a, a, another goal, as well as a bunch of other things. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? For me personally, you I would like, for me, them. I would love a family dynamic. dynamic. Me, I would love it. Am I going outside every day looking for, looking for what? No, not necessarily. However, though, like, if I see something that I like, I will move with the intention of a person who wants to have this thing. Okay, so, you're basically, so basically what you're saying is you're in control of your destiny. 
Because you're acting well, upon no, I think the most want. high is ultimately in control because I don't know if I am. Because I know what I want. That's it, true. I, but I'm happy, I'm happy though. This is the thing with me. I'm okay with it not happening. I want it to happen. Yeah. But if it doesn't happen and it's not my story, it just wasn't my story. So I'm okay with that. But also I think that I'm talking from a point of privilege too. Yeah. I'll tell you why I'm talking from a point of privilege too. Because if I want to, I can go outside and get some Penan bread today if I want. So Chat that's to not to say that I am gonna do that. But like that, but then also I could fight, I could use that as a as a weapon and say, well then maybe sometimes that makes you a little bit too complacent then. Because not necessarily. Not necessarily, but sometimes necessarily. How? Because you then, what happens is, and I've been guilty of this in the past, not today, <laughs> he, he but in the so past. Far away. <laughs> yeah. Not me. In the past, it's yeah. like, you know what? I want it, yeah. But hear what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I'm trying to find a nice way of putting this. Like, ultimately, I could go and get a thing and hug and get what I want from that moment if I want to. And because of that, now, when I've got something over here that I'm potentially looking at, it's like, I could just nitpick that till the cows come home. Because ultimately, I don't need it. So, but it's, it's given me, me going outside and doing that has given me this false sense of feeling like, well, like she's not for me. Because I could do this and do that and do this and do that. But it's that, the same with what people have, good, it's what though. people do with porn. Yeah, but huh? I think that's good what you've got, what you've done right there. You have honestly, you're honest with yourself and you're honest with the connections in which you have because you're not looking for anything. So it's not like, I just feel like, there are some people I have, yeah, they're, in my life, they're looking for a partner and then when they meet a several people, it's like they're looking for it like it's fucking job applications, Chucky. They're like, I don't think this person's right for me and they start breaking it down. I'm looking at this girl like, so what? All of these guys are just applicants to you. Like, what the what what the hell is going on? Yeah, so this wrong, is that might be the wrong weird. mentality. Like, but that's but she goes to me. But I'm looking to fight, settle down. I'm like, so because you're looking to settle down now, you're now taking into consideration all of these guys that instinctively you don't really check for. That says to me one of two things: you're a psychopath, and on top of being a psychopath, <laughs> you don't know yourself that well. Like no, you know sometimes... yourself well. You've just said, hey, what's that? What's yeah, that? I don't think you know yourself well. Who like, I know. The most important aspect of it. Listen, why, wait, EA Sports, why? I'll be honest with you, yeah? Why? I'm a man. Wait, go. Uh, like, why knowing let yourself? Let me understand this. Yeah, so for example, I'll give you an example. Damn it, damn it, damn it, cool. damn it, damn it. There's this girl. There's a girl in it. And the way <laughs> she was introduced to me in my life, I'm not saying she's here now, I'm not saying she's gone, I'm just saying there was a girl. And the way she was introduced into my life is the weirdest way. She was talking to someone I knew. I said, shut up, man. Go over there, man. Pretty girls always want to chat, man. Move. She goes, what? Walked up to me, licked my hand and said, fuck off. And then walked away. And I looked at her and said, what the hell is... What? But guess what? Go on. For me, that works. I'm in now. I'm like, what? What the hell are you licking my hand? Now we're having a... Now I, want to, I want to know that I'm like, this is interesting to me. As crazy as it sounds, now I'm in. That works for me. I'm not looking for nothing. I'm having a good time. Then the moment God presents something into me that's of genuine interest, I'm like, hey, I'm over there. I don't need a, a million of those. I don't need job applicants to look at and be like, this girl, that girl. No, it's, I'm single. It feels right. That feels confusing. I like Let me that. Let go interest. I like that. I like that. And yeah. then I build from there. Yeah. This sort of mentality that, well, man, I'm getting older. I need to settle down. I just think all of a sudden your eyes are glazed. Everything you look at is with a, could I settle down with that type of person? Big man, some people are lonely, you know? Big man, be alone, but you don't have to be lonely. <laughs> I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. Some people are lonely, man. Not for them business, man, idiot. Go outside, man, say hello to something. I don't and like you know what as well? I hear you as well, I'm the knowing yourself thing. Only light like rebuttal is, is that sometimes you could be with somebody, you could not know yourself really, be with somebody and learn to discover yourself through being with somebody. 100%. I'm not, I'm not saying these things are faults, by the way. I'm just saying that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's just what it is. Yeah. I think the more you know yourself, the better you are at making certain decisions. Stop. The Take the, the more confident you are. And oh. they, they can slow that. They can Smell slow it. confidence versus desperation. Oh my The Lord. average don, though, yeah. Women. No, 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 but hey, but this is the original point Chucky was talking the about. The average, average don. don. Sometimes I hear it like, yes, oh, you know, this is the thing. You're, you're right. But I'm putting myself 
into the average person yeah, and thinking to myself, oh, these fucking guys are sitting here talking about being confident. It's so easy for them to be confident, isn't it? It's so easy for them. Like, you can't, sometimes for some people, it's so difficult finding confidence. Especially, yeah. especially if, you know what? Each time you do something to get confidence, so let's say, for example, you might get a little promotion in your job, might get a little bit more money, you might start, you might go gym, you might get a little faster, a little bigger or whatever. Something else just slaps you with a little piece of rejection. So you go back down again. Yeah. So now you're trying to find the next thing, next thing, next thing. Then life just slicks you again. Then something else just slaps you again. Then living crisis again. Then that, nah. Then the build. I hear like, you. No, all I of these things you. just keep bringing. And then it's like, it brings you back down. And then all of a sudden it's like, you just get these men talking about, oh, all you got to do is be confident, mate. All right, watch this, watch this, <laughs> watch this. You're right. No, no, Chucky, we can, let's not avoid that. <laughs> no, but he's right, though. He is right. No, what no, no life about? is hard, bro. It's hard. I'm saying green life is hard. I'm saying if you believe in your... He's thoughts, got a missus, by the way. So you've seen him talking with Yeah, 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 yeah. A missus that I fought to get. Uh, you yeah. fought to get? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm saying... All right, Cheryl Cole, fuck it up. <laughs> no, I'm saying if you believe in your source, the rejection, you won't take it as a personal rejection. If you believe in your source, poet, how many times have you been rejected? Bear. Is but but poet is not the average know? guy. No, 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 no. That's the thing. That's the point no, that Chuck I, I, I agree, but I'm saying I'm on, on a basic level, if, you, if you've if been rejected, your personal, you're not going to be like, it's me. You, you might like, do. Bro, you might do. Bro, do you know how much men deal with rejection? And way they don't do more it than well. the average woman. The thing is though, what you got to look, EA Sports, you have to understand, put it this way, maybe there's regional confidence and global confidence. I would say Chucky has global confidence. Yes. I would say a couple of my cousins have regional confidence. Um, so if we go yeah. Tottenham and we're chilling in Tottenham, then man, yo, Thrive. regional. Any guy a little chat to it, they're crazy. Let's go Central London. Let's go Central <laughs> London. Let's okay. go Central London. So, so I'm saying now, with that situation there, it's about understanding oneself. It's not about, because like I said, I've been rejected, but I've been, I remember being rejected when I had regional confidence. Right. So in my estate, I'm the man. Right. If I get rejected there, we turn it into a joke. It's not that deep. Everyone's laughing. Then I got rejected at school. It's different. Right. I look left and right. I now don't know the next move in this environment because I only have this level of confidence when I'm in my region mm. then what happens is you have to take yourself and say do you know what I've just got to stay in my region or create other regions stay there more often so when I come out of my comfort zone I carry that confidence with me and I think a lot of people spend more time in environments that are not representative of themselves so when certain situations manifest they don't even know how to respond but if you was responding in your environment you'll feel comfortable where am I going with this? I just think a lot of guys, unfortunately, are putting themselves in situations where you're just not meant to be there, bro. Like, you, I can take a look at certain girls, yeah, and know that's not the girl for me. Oh, I know it. All the like, time. certain certain girls that are considered baddies, for example. I time. know, when I look at their Instagram, I know Hundred. what they want. I'm not what you want. So if I go over there and get rejected, it doesn't make sense. Of course I am. I know myself. I shouldn't go over there. Yes, it looks nice, but guess what, mate? Loads of things look nice. Take a look at it, walk away. You have to figure out, in my school, who was I? Because this is just a giant playground outside of school, to be fair. And what did I attract in my school? What people were... Tra it's not going to be too dissimilar to now. It can grow and go other places, but I just think this Remember sort of... Remember, also, the average person didn't attract y'all in school either. That's true. But <laughs> they attracted at least one y'all. Uh, and what was that y'all? In five years, you must have attracted uh, one y'all. In school. Do you know what? I go back to my school, day. You attracted bear girl, allow it. I'll go back to my, nah, I didn't, I didn't really. You just didn't know. Maybe, that's true. You just didn't know, Chucky. That's true, that's true. You definitely. Now, did you know what, I, there was a couple guys. I just didn't, Come on, I, my brother. Was, I didn't man. want them. That was all it was. You was but, not <laughs> an average guy, bro, stop doing this. No, nah, but here what, yeah. Go on. I look at a couple of my brethren that they weren't attracting girl like so, so much like that, but then a couple were, a lot, you get me? But like, I think the, the believing in your source thing, by the way, is like a it's a really good thing to have. But I feel like it's a it's a it can almost be like to get there, the work almost that you need to do sometimes to get there and hold it. It's like a it's like a luxury tribute attribute, sorry, that you gain and that you hold. But it's not something that people just have. Do you know what I mean? And some people believe in their source but just in one dynamic. Like a, the average guy who's a plasterer, he might believe in every ounce in his work. 
source. That's his comfort zone. That's exactly. his region. And he's done it over and over and over yeah. again. But you know what? He would have that same confidence if he had the opportunity over and over again to maybe, you know, speak to a women, encounter women or whatever and understand them a little bit more and whatnot. But I don't think the average man does. And going back to our first original, original, original point, this is why I know that enough men are just not even even on the basic thing chopping. I'm not even saying that as a, as a disrespect, this, by the no, way. No, no, you're being. I'm just so saying, like, real, yeah, man. which is why, like, sometimes when a when food presents itself, men are grabbing that to bits. They can't believe they've had this opportunity. Like this like, as what? well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like in this. a dance. But then also, where the man them have to just be careful is that that hunger doesn't and that starvation. Yeah. I am using that as a joke, but I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you don't go too mad with it. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know what? You see like that video that we saw there, laughing and joking is cool. That is funny-ish, yeah. But that finger banging was tech, that was techie. Yeah, that was techie. And another another woman might be like, a bit, you know when they start pulling, pushing your back a little bit, be, be easy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you just have to act like you've been there before. I watched the woman say, because you know what it looked like? It looked like he learnt that from porn. So I watched the woman say, Yeah. They, they said to a woman, oh, how do you learn about sex? Do you watch porn? She goes, I don't watch motor car racing to learn about driving. And I was like, do you know what? I need to find her name. That makes sense to I me. So I think a lot of guys are watching porn, seeing that and saying, yo, that's what the girl them want. Yeah, that's what, that was me at one point. Serious? Yeah, Justin Slayer. That was my don. No, I didn't think, no, I didn't But hear what I'm saying. Justin Slayer was doing certain things at a certain point, And I'm saying to myself, you know what? I want to try that. But then, I, bro, I cho- I, I've said it here before. I chopped in Tim's. I, I got Tim, Tim's to chop in. Because I saw my man doing it. I thought that was what everyone was on. Do you know what? To be honest with you, that's what I thought Tim's was about. I thought Tim's was about hip hop and chopping. But to be honest with but you. But when you're young, you just... There was like it wasn't like how it is now with the age of bare information. I'm just seeing Tim's. I'm immersed in this thing musically, so I'm seeing what the man and that's wearing, and I'm seeing Justin wearing Tim's and he's chopping. This is me doing all these weird positions and that. You know, I look back at I like my missus, yeah, you know at the time, talking. and my missus must like. I, I know now that we would be able to look back and have a funny conversation about what we were actually doing at a point because some of the stuff I was trying to do, it's ridiculous, bro. And I wasn't even, like, now I've got a little size on me now. I can pick up, I can do certain... But I was struggling yeah, trying to do certain things in the room. That's all part of the... You get me. I'm still struggling. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> bro. But you know what? With that being said, good message is that, like, trust me, porn is not giving you information really nah. about what you, what a woman wants. Your, your, your better thing is sometimes is to ask or, you know what, over a little while, you kind of get a understanding through the way the body moves and certain conversations or whatever. This is Taser, hold on one second. Yo, um, I'm live, you're live, we're recording the podcast right now. You're a loudspeaker. Oh, um, That's actually funny because I'm calling you about the podcast. All right, so I've got two questions for you quickly, yeah? All right, cool. Did you learn anything about sex through porn? Um, I did, but I got it wrong. Um, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say I learned anything through, um, about sex through porn, no. Okay. Um, and the second question is, have you eaten banana bread on a toilet seat? No, of course not. Okay. Did you hear that? I feel like I feel like that would be a bad look for the army and soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> you might end up like one shot of tequila as well. Yeah, so so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you saying? Yeah, so the reason I called you is um, on the previous episode, I don't know where the timestamp is, but someone specifically said, if I say this, you're going to cut this out. Someone then agreed, but then they cut it out. Poet hit me about that, and I hit EA about it. I told yeah, e- I told EA to oversee it. Oversee what? Which bit? The last bit? I don't know. I think he's talking about... Remember when I messaged you and I said, oh, poet... Yeah, with the end of the episode. It was, what was it about? I, I told you to overlook it. No, but what was it about? What was it about? Should I have cut out? I don't he know. He says, let me cut like. this out. Make sure you cut this out. It's self-explanatory here, you know. What? Chucky like. says, I'm going to say something, but cut it out. And then you said... No. No, I never... I don't know. All I know is I said to you, overlook it, and he did. And then he said, it's fine. 
Taser, what do you know what was said? No, no, it was just been said in my group chat, and and obviously they said Chucky's pod. So I thought, let me phone Chucky and double check, because obviously I'm looking out for Chucky and that. You hear me? What are you say? Well, I got a fight. What? Should I fire my man? Huh? I don't know, you know. I, I, I know my man's in the background. Brother, like, say the word, bro. Say the no, word. Man. No, man, I like EA, man. So you say I should allow him? I think you should allow him still. Ah, I like him, I like him. I'll give, I'll give him a couple. Taser, they should have asked me. He's checking. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, T, I'll shout you, yeah? All right, All right love. Fucking hero. <laughs> Double check it, but yeah. Um, shout out Taser, shout out Chucky. Jermaine Defoe asking me to come to R&B and slow jams is the funniest thing yeah, ever. It's crazy. Like, did you um t- t- turn it off? Um, is he coming? Did you want me to put him down by the way? Yeah, he w- but he wants like a plus nine hundred. No, Carlos, can't, let's, can't. Bro, do you know, let, let me he tell you something. A plus five, to be honest with you. Let me tell you something, bro. This is this is all conversation for another day. Do you know what I'm doing at the moment? I'm buying tickets of people that are saying that they can't come anymore because. You know what? Obviously, there's certain people that I can never say no to. Yeah. But the way that this is working, yeah, is that we got a certain guest list number. Yeah. You see, when we start doing the live pods and stuff, you're gonna really start to understand this. Oh no, yeah. remember, I've been doing events and all this, so, t- so oh, I know so it, you how know. it goes. Okay, but fair. I'm just but you're they... a nicer guy than me. I'm not that much of a nice guy when it comes to things like that. I'm just like, this is what it is. I understand what you. No, so I do, I do, I do do that. I do do that. But like, basically. So the, the venue are running the guest list. So they know oh. they know how much tickets we've sold and they know how much guest list allocation we've got. So if we go over it, then that's a problem instantly. Yeah? But sometimes what happens is, is there are some people that check for me or that are cool. They're not like my brethren, brethren like that, but they're just cool. They hit me up for guest list and it's not a problem. I just be like, yeah, cool. Because they, they've got to me early. But then what then happens is, is that later on, people that some people that really do check for me, have hit me for guest list and the guest list is ran, but I can't tell, I can't, I can't, so I can't tell you no, but that person that hit me earlier, if that person had hit me like closer to the time, I, I could tell them you. no. I fully, fully So you. now what I'm doing is, yeah, for this point, what I'm doing is, is I'm like buying tickets for people that ain't coming or saying that they can't come and then I'm replacing names on the guest list. So for example, say you want to come here, yeah? You're gonna go on the guest list, get the wristband and that, and I'll just take a name off. Like, let's just say flipping. Someone said, "Oh, could you put so and so on the guest list for me?" I'll look at that name and I'll say, "All right, cool." I'll contact contact them and I'll say to them, "Here's a ticket. They ain't gotta pay for it, but here's a ticket." So I take them off the guest list and just give them a, a normal ticket. That makes and sense. That, that way, everyone's kind of happy. You know, they they might not get a wristband, but you know what? I saw it go. But yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's it is it's a little bit difficult. It's easier when you are. If it was just me and Taser, then it wouldn't even be so bad. But it's like, there's other people that are in the mix of this too that have lists and that and whatever. Well, I'm messaging him right now whilst whilst we're here talking about Bro, there's not much on the menu now. That was a sick conversation, by the way. I enjoyed that. Um, We went to go see 21 Savage yesterday. Right. Should we be honest? Yes. All right, cool. So myself and Chucky last night went to the O2 to watch 21 Savages return to the UK. He also brought some special guests. He brought out Central C, he brought out Pop Car and my favourite, and Jay Haas, who got an incredible reception. Mm. The question is, what did you think of the show? I didn't really love it. Why? Um, why didn't I love it? I just felt as though... I, look, let's be clear here. I'm not the biggest 21 Savage fan. Okay. Now, when I say that, it sounds like I'm saying I don't like him. That's not the case. I'm just saying I'm not the biggest fan. Mm-hmm. So I'm already going to this show thinking that, like, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff here that I might not know and I might not necessarily get. But I go to a lot of live shows. I go and see artists that I might not check for, I might not know nothing about, and still really enjoy the show. Do you know what I mean? Hundreds. I think for me, yeah, it just felt like, you know what? In all honesty, it almost just felt like it was the the arena was too big for him, if you ask me. Okay. I felt like there was that. I felt like, not to say that the vibe wasn't, because it was good, and obviously he is black, a huge, like there was loads of people there. So it was warranted that he did the O2. But in terms of like, just like crowd control, talking, there's like little, um, there was a moment where obviously he was changing and the, this flipping house is showing on the screen for ages and like it took him ages to come back out. It was just like, it just, there was just an element of the show for me that just felt a bit boring. 
Do you know what I mean? Mm. I didn't feel like I was being massively entertained. If I was a pr- super big 21 Savage fan though, maybe I might have looked at it very differently, but I just didn't feel like the entertainment ele- element of that show was that great. Whereas I might have, if if this was condensed into like a smaller venue with maybe the same amount of feeling, it might have felt different for me. But today I was like, in the middle of the show, I was like, f- like yeah, I'm, I'm getting a light bit bored. I think I've been, yeah, I'm, I'm similar to you. I've been spoiled from some of the shows that I've seen throughout my life. Um, so therefore, just my perception on what a live show should offer me. One thing I believe it should always offer, and I'm a 21 Savage fan, like when the songs were going off, I couldn't believe I knew so many words. I was like, oh my God, yeah. I'm actually a fan of this guy. But one thing I will say about the show, and the show, I'm with Chucky, it was good, like, it was good to be there. Nice to see the uh, people that get brought out. Yeah. Nice to hear this music <coughs> that I play in my house in an arena like that, and loads definitely. of people listen to. I liked and enjoyed all of those moments. This is the only thing that I would say about the show. If I was not a 21 Savage fan in any capacity and I didn't know much about him, but I liked rap, I liked all of that stuff, but I didn't know about 21 Savage, I would like the show, but I don't know if it would be enough for me to go and listen to 21 Savage afterwards. 100%. That was kind of how I felt, bro. Yeah. Like, I felt like, this is cool, this is cool, but I think the thing that I probably liked the most out of it is that I like what he stands for, where yes. he comes from. Yes. And I love the fact that a man like that can be on a stage like this, in an arena like this, performing this type of music. In front so, of a cool Cajun crowd. Like yes, exactly. Real. For me, I just love and respect that. So I think that was the bit that I was holding on to the most. Like, yeah, like it feels like one of the man them that's there just doing his thing. Yeah. And like, I'm always, like, I, I like that. Making his money and his tunes have connected in which way. But yeah, I didn't leave there thinking, oh, like, rah, do you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even know about this rhythm. I didn't know about that. I need, let me go and go home and bump a couple rhythms or whatever. I just thought, nah, like it was just, it was just okay. It was and just that's okay. my only problem with it, Chuck. Yeah. Especially when, um, me and the two people we went through we went with yesterday, like Keish and Mitch, one thing we spoke about is the production value in 50 Cent Show. Mm. And going from a high production value in 50 Cent Show, and then when you speak about a smaller show, Gigs you show, because it was intimate, it had a different effect. And I was just like, 21, man, like, maybe Chuck's right. Where it's you coming back to England, maybe it should have been an intimate show where the videos and everything, all of the coverage around it would have been more impactful because it would have looked crazier than... The old two show, like the old two show, like I said, it was nice, but it was done. It was done because this is the thing, yeah. Yeah. The O two show was done maybe because they looked at the stats and they just knew that they could do it. But mm-hmm. I don't think that's why you should do it. No. I think like it should be about it should be about the moment more than anything, and like also the long game because I think Twenty One Savage coming here for the first time in wait, he was born here. Yeah. He was born here and then moved over here. So this is the first time he's come back since being born here. Like we also, a lot of us understand that significance too. Even his fans do. Yeah. So you know what, yeah? You see this first one, it's supposed to feel like, you know what, 21 Savage is here. You can't even, you can't even just get in there like that. Do you get what I'm saying? Even if it's a Brixton Academy or something like that, like go there and murk it. Then when you come back, let's go and do the uh, O2 Arena thing. You could maybe even do a young color. See like how them man them like do um, 21 Savage and Drake or whatever. You could come and do 21 Savage or maybe one of the man them here or something like that. Him, let's, I'm just gonna throw gigs out there to just as a name, but it's like they could do something like that. Just do something mad, sick, different or whatever. But I just think that this was the scale of what in which they tried to pull this off of adding to the significance of him not being here for a long time, it didn't match. If I was him, do you know what I would have done? I would have done a small doc before I got here, done a flip of Eddie Murphy's coming to America, coming to England, mm. and I would have revisited all of the things, like he went Brixton, go to his old school, I would have had that happening and <coughs> playing on screen throughout the show mm. in certain parts to introduce certain things. Mm. Just so there's a bit of, because one thing I will say is I, I believe there was a lot of Drake fans there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because when he done songs outside of the stuff on the joint project and that were not too recent, like when he done some of the joints that are on um, Metro Boomin's project, like 10 Freaky Girls, like people didn't really know the words like that. Mm. So I'm looking at it like, oh, like some of you are new, new 21 Savage fans and some of you are here because FOMO. 
Mm. You know he's got something with Drake. Drake might come out. You know he might right. bring some other people out. You know, there's a lot of hype around it. So you're there for alternative reasons other than 21 Savage makes good music. I want to come and support 21 Savage. And I think after 20 minutes in the set, you could sort of feel that energy of when he plays 21, can you? It's going to go Mad. sick. Yeah. And it did. Yeah, that, that went off. Went That's off. a really... Do you know what? It's made me think about something actually, yeah? So I think that... You see... Uh, let's take let's take uh, Twenty One Savage as like a little light case study here. Yeah, mm. so he's already got his own fan base. He's been outside for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Right, people. There's a lot of people that love and respect him. But also with being aligned with Drake, who is an absolute Super monster, global. that has like uh, widened his fan base. Now, when you look at the widening of, widening of that fan base, a percentage of those people would have looked at 21 Savage and gone back to some of his older stuff and been like, this guy is cold. Yeah. But then also, a lot would not have done that. They would have looked at the songs that he's done with Drake or whatever and just said, yeah, I love 21 Savage because they love Drake and they love these songs and they love this moment. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. Either, either is fine, yeah. But I think with that, with an artist like this, when you do a show... Take away the arena thing. You find Alexandra Palace, 10,000 people or whatever, yeah? Oto Arena is 20,000. So let's just go down to 10,000 here, yeah? You say, all right, how do I find ways to really engage with my core fan base, especially in England because I'm coming to England? And this, the significance is I've not been here for a long time. I think artists should do this anyway, well, find ways to do this anyway. You know, you have things like discords and whatever yeah, else, yeah, yeah. else is, yeah? But it's like, there's a place where there are thousands of your core family. Like, you know that these people are your riders. They buy tickets to your stuff. They buy your merch. They stream your music a lot. You know what? Maybe you might get some stats for, from certain places that can show that these people actually exist here. Yeah? And you take a section of those people and you say, all right, cool. I'm going to be here at this time on this date. We are going to allocate x amount of percentage of our tickets to you so it could be 50 percent, 60 percent, it could be 40 percent, whatever it is you figure that out and in that way when you're in this space you've got the you've got 60 percent or 70 percent of people in here that are your riders yeah. they are yours then you've got the other percentage of ones that like really like a lot of your songs but they might have came on board when drake you know when you did the stuff with Drake or whatever else and whatnot, but they still really like you and that. Then also you've got like, it's just some other people that just might like one or two. But the overwhelming um, percentage are the riders though. Mm. You see the atmosphere in the room then, especially when it comes to doing songs like you just mentioned, it's like people then know the lyrics more and then you get a, a smaller percentage who that would be me in that tiny percent. I would look at that and be like, Bruh, what is this? Like, what is that? Like, because I don't know about that one. I don't know about it. It would just sound so much better. It would look better. Much better. And, and, and the significance of him not being here for such a long time matches the vibe. Do you get That's what, what I'm saying? I love the doc, man. If he'd done a doc and he just had little things that were happening sporadically throughout it. So he might, in a doc one day, speak about uh, the music he made before he was in... Uh, before he spoke about even being from London, before anyone knew mm. what he represented. And then he can do songs which are s tying in perfectly with whatever subject matter he happens to be, sp you know, to be speaking about, just to enlighten the group of people that yeah. are here now as well. I think a lot of artists should take a look at, um, a lot of artists that make music in a similar realm and have different situations where a lot of their fan base may be nuanced because of an artist doing a collaboration with them and then, then bringing in this whole new fan base. I think you should go and watch like MTV Unplugged from back in the day on just how to present your music to a group of people. I think Lauren Hill done it absolutely incredibly. I always talk about Kanye West's one. Like it is stupid. <coughs> the way he talks about uh, Spaceship, just his story on Spaceship and his uncle and his relationship he had with his uncle working in a shop. And then you hear Spaceship. It makes you even feel more connected to the song or I don't know I feel more involved in the project to a certain extent like smart, the way he speaks about Last Call and then you hear Last Call and then that long conversation at the end of it like as, as corny as it sounds them things will stay with me forever you know because it makes me realise how much what goes into the music how much you actually care and I would love to just see that from certain artists such as like 21 Savage something in and around the music which allows people to get a better idea of where it comes from and how it was created yeah I think, how do you, the conversation I think for certain artists here yeah, that hit a, um, 
a certain height, especially when that trend, the, the trajectory propels even more when you align with somebody else in a moment. Because naturally, like I said, it happens with Instagram. It's like, you know, my Instagram does what it does, but if I take a picture with so-and-so and that person reposts it, then, Game or on. if I go if I go on tour with, let's say, I, you know, I go on tour with a certain artist, I'm their DJ, then, you know what, their fans are going to follow me for a moment because obviously I'm in and amongst that, isn't it? Of yeah? course. So, and, they, and they'll be active with me for a tiny bit, yeah. but then after a while they go off and they do their thing because I'm, I don't become that important. But um, the, the point being is that, like, with an artist, when you have that, you have core fan base and then you start propelling, how do you how do you find ways to communicate with those so that you don't lose that? Because I feel like that is where the power, I feel like that's where the power is for everything, even with your live shows. I don't think that it should stop when you get to a certain point. I think that there should always be a method in which you do that. Like, one of the reasons why I've been thinking about that is because even with R&B and slow jams, we've looked at that. I'll tell you why. The, the events are selling out really quickly, yeah? And I remember saying, like, the first one that sold out super quickly, we were all really happy, bro. But there was something in me that felt like, is this fair? Is it fair? I was asking myself, is it fair? Mm -hmm. Let me land, yeah? Shout so out. now, social media, we've marketed it really well. Social media is doing its thing or whatnot. Now there's like more people that want to come here yeah, because they've seen these moments or whatnot. There's also been people that have been coming for a long time from early on, yeah? Now when tickets sell out, yeah, when tickets sell out in one minute, how many of those people that have been coming from, that have contributed. We've taken videos uh, of them. We've taken videos of them singing, bro. Yeah. So those those bits there contribute to more people wanting to come. So how many of them have been able to get a ticket or being able to like, I don't want us to alienate um, those people from, yeah. from what we're doing. So do you know what we did? We, we all allocate 10% of our tickets to them because we found stats. We got stats that show um, some of the people that have like, bought tickets from early on, how much money they've spent with us, like the shows that they've been to and all of that. So what happens is now we've got their email addresses. We just hit them up and let them know, you know what, like there's a certain amount of tickets there for them and they can, they don't, they have a better chance of being able to get them. Now, one time someone noticed that there was pre-sale tickets and they got really upset. Oh my God, it sells out so quickly and we want a pre-sale. And I'm like, I hear that still, but like, we feel like it's important that the people that have been coming for a long, this didn't start last month or if, did we, did we started in 2021, technically. So like really now we've done X amount of events. It's important that some of those people that have been constantly coming can still get a ticket to come if they want to come. Those ones still might sell out too, but it's a way of like co communicating with them and building a relationship with them. And by doing that, it makes it extra special. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think artists should should always try to find ways of doing that, even when it comes to doing arena shows. It, I think it's a, it's a sick thing to hear an artist turn around and say, "Yeah, do you know what? Like, I do arena tours, but we've got we got stats on um, core you know, fan base members, core fan base members, or whatever, and we've contacted them and we give them we allocate a certain percentage to them. I think that is a cold, cold thing to do. And one and and one thing that it does stop is if you have a catalogue of music but you've got one big song with let's say Drake, yeah. Like I know he's got more, but I'm just as an example. No, I know exactly you've got one big from. song and then now you've got loads of people. When we go to the show, everyone's loads of people are just standing there waiting till the end. Because it's just the one big song at the end. Yeah, it's like when um, I watch Central C perform at um Rolling Loud in the States. I'm watching this kid on stage and I'm like oh Give him a bit more for Christ's sake. Like, if this yeah. Don was in the UK, his music's ringing off. I'm realizing that they connected to Those a song that was on obviously an American director's um, YouTube channel. And then there you go. All of a sudden, the American audience are gravitating towards that song. And outside of that, they might, I'm imagining they know more now. Mm. But at a start, outside of that, it wouldn't have been too far, which are. I don't know, it's just... Uh, it, it, the festivals are a bit me. different because always I think with me. festivals, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are trying to win people over. No, no, no 100%. You know, I'll just show you the example. Live shows. He, was, he, he was performing late and it was just how much yeah. one song can bring you somewhere, but then your right. whole catalogue doesn't really give you the opportunity to do the same things the song does. It could yeah. be disheartening for an artist, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because once the credibility or the love for that song disappears, like, for example, that song with Drake that artists might have, yeah. now what? 100%. 
Yeah, G. Howlers. I sent so much over to EA Sports, you know. Oh, phone call. Oh, skits is with conversation that was today. Good balance and that, you know what I mean? If I live my life, I find my balance. Oh my god, I might have to play you something. Um, all right, people, let me just get them together. I've sent them to EA Sports. Apparently, I haven't. I have. <coughs> people, some of these are very disappointing. EA, I'm going to start off with parenthood because you know what? I've recently been Sweden with my children. Can I honestly say as well, fathers, if you're not looking after your kids, selfishly you should. And I say selfishly because the energy that your children, your offspring give you, it's like no other. I'm, I don't know two other individuals on planet Earth that are more happy to see me than my reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst looking in two mirrors. <laughs> now, Chucky right now uh, can see a young boy <coughs> getting his ass handed to by his mum. This is crazy. Just to let you know, his mum is punching him oh, and kicking him crazy. whilst he's in the bath. And the shower curtain has now come off. He's not even having a shower. I do don't do? even think he's remotely wet. She has dragged him out of the shower and is now kicking him and punching him by his hair as well. Look at that. Excuse me for that. Oh God. Yeah, so, and now she's over him and everyone's probably thinking in here, what is she telling him? Well, she is quite upset at the fact that her 18-year-old son has slept with her best friend. The question I want to ask you, Chucky, is, is this right for the mum to do to her son? No. So then what should she be doing to the That's friend? That's crazy. She should be, if anything, she should be doing this to her brethren. So I said, look at the way she's talking. Look at it, looking at him. Like, some women can fight, you know. Trust like, me. Some women can fight. They just got the technique of just knowing how to grab. They know which position to grab the hair in. And before you know it, when yeah, you wrapped it like that. I'm telling you. Yeah, like that. And he can't go nowhere. Crazy. Nah, that's mad. That's nah. mad. That is crazy. I just think, parents, we should do a better job. The look, fact that this young lady has contributed in raising been, this boy and she's that. raised this boy and after 18 years, he wants to sleep with the miss, uh, uh, the mum's friend. The mum needs to take a little bit of responsibility in the situation. You've helped raise this boy to have the mentality he look has and now you're out here stomping him out. That is crazy. This bro. is you're ridiculous. Be, you're going to um, blur that out. Though, of course. Me. And all I want to say to you, I'm going to ask you one question, Chucky. He's, st he's still getting lashed this whole time. It's two minutes of beating this you up. Chucky, what country is it in? America. I was saying close Germany. Open up Germany now. I don't mind you too much. Go back and close America for 10 months. This is a joke. Crazy. You can't punch up your picnic like that, man. I'm not even in... Do you know my new thing? I'm not even in... I don't even agree with beating picnic no more. Nah, nah, nah. I don't really, really that. agree with beating picnic. I'm not really on that. I really got a couple that. beats now and then. Look at her. Look Talking at to her. the camera proud. Look at look at that. Licks is getting... That is crazy. I can't lie to you. I've seen people look shout. At my, look at this. Oh my word. Yeah, that relationship's fractured forever. Oh, of course. Ever. And do you know what parents don't understand? At one point, you're going to be old, like really old, and you can walk and you can just about talk. Yeah, yeah. Who's looking after you? He Try no. He might come back one day and just lick her down. I'll keep my opinions to myself. But he might come back one day and lick her down. I wouldn't be surprised. Do you know what came back and licked down one man as well, you know? Uh, his apparent supposed relationship with his ex-partner. I want you to go to the no context human uh, text I sent you. That's the one right there. Now, I'm, I don't want to show the whole clip. It's a minute long. But he speaks about his missus. Let's take a look at this, Chuck. Let's hear it. Let's hear some sound. Sorry, I should have given it a bit of context. This young man that looks exactly like EA Sports, he is here talking to a woman about his ex-partner. Yeah. 8.5. What do you think she would rate you? 5, 6. Who broke up with who? She done it. Do you miss her still? Yeah. I thought I was going to marry her. Now, as you can see, he thought he was going to marry her. He was very much deeply in love with this woman. His ex-girl. Now, his ex-girl is in a separate room with a guy in a burgundy jumper watching. Let's go straight to the end of the video to find out what happened. I wish we could be together. This is beautiful. She runs out. She hugs him. 
Oh, shit. It's the wrong ex. Oh, oh, no. He's in camera. He's in front of the camera pouring his heart out. I love you. I miss you. I still want to be with you. She's sitting there thinking, I didn't know any of this. this. Do you know why? It wasn't for you, darling. Oh, no. She thought she was having a look at Obama or a picnic these times. He's probably oh, thinking about no. another beautiful princess from East Africa. Sorry, <sighs> Helen. What? Not That's this an awful time. conversation, that. Horrible. Not for me. No. I love horrible things. Like that. Babes, I'm like, sorry, I wasn't talking about you. I don't even chat about you, you know. You're oh, cool, you're, Yeah, yeah. You're pretty still. But uh, <laughs> I, mean, I just... Oh, and EA wait. Sports, I'll let you guess what That's country this is in. That's <laughs> a nightmare. Um, That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. I'm going to go back to America now. Uh, this one I sent you on Instagram, EA Sports. I don't have the full explanation, and I did try to look for it, but then I decided not to. Man arrested for allegedly botching two-year-old cousin's circumcision. A Florida Disgusting. man. All you got to do, by the way, if people is type in Florida man and your birthday. And I guarantee you a man in Florida has done something absolutely crazy on your birthday. Go and type in Florida man, Disgusting. your birthday on Google. And you'll see what people are getting up to on your birthday in Florida. A Florida man was arrested last month after he allegedly oh, tried man. circumcising his toddler cousin, which went terribly wrong i believe he's been arrested and he should be going sent to prison that is crazy i just want to know what is the conversation with the parents leading up to you allegedly agreeing maybe there was no agreement in place in circumcising your two-year-old I, 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 I don't know what's going on there but let me tell you something one i ain't agreeing to that so if i come home and i find out that that's what's going on i'm going to jail Oh, 100%. I'm going to jail. I always say, when it, people don't understand. When you have a child, you will realise there is one reason you could go to prison. <laughs> Before then, As you don't even know. Certified facts. Certified yeah, yeah. facts. Not even because you want to. Yeah. Sometimes you just hear them a little bit upset and you're looking around like, who troubled them? Yeah. I can't describe it. Yeah. So 100%. So yeah. And again, I would like people to know this incident happened in USA, AKA the United States of America, the same place that the Obama couple haven't been together in a picture scene since the alleged homosexual rumors came out. I would love to know what's happening with Michelle and uh, Barack, my beautiful couple. You are? Yeah. I just, thought, I just thought, I thought I'd throw things out there. I just throw it out there. So ever since apparently, the alleged fact that he likes to butter both sides of the bread, his brother said this, now all of a sudden you can't take a picture of Michelle. That doesn't feel right to me. This is crazy. Brother, so was that. Now was Barkley <laughs> single. <laughs> hey. All right, listen. Weekend. We're oh, yeah. losing. Before we do leave, big up Chucky. Oh. RB Slow Jams are going this weekend. And also big up a couple of people. Oh, big up T.E. That's why he's got a new rhythm out. Big up T.E. Big up Mo Gilligan. It's called A, Mil a Millie For My Thoughts, I think. One thing I always just do here sometimes, and I have done in the past, I don't say always, is I discredit people for getting to the top and then sort of kind of forgetting about the people that you helped you and you helped and so on and so forth on your journey. Uh, Mo Gilligan, from my understanding, last night just done his second to last uh, sold out date on the Mo Gilligan and Friends tour. This tour has the likes of Baba Tunde. This tour has the likes of Slim. This tour has the likes of... Who else is on this tour? Everyone's on this damn tour. Eddie Caddy. So... Like I said, people usually get to this point that Mo Gilligan's at, and let's not let's have it and, right. And disappear. He is, and disappear. You don't even know that they're black again. I want to shout out Mo Gilligan, honestly, bro. The work that you're doing, not just mainstream wise, but culturally on your Instagram, everything you're doing needs to be sung about a lot more, my bro. A hundred percent. Shout outs to you, credit to you, and shout out Baba Tunde as well, Baba Tunde. One day I want you to come on the couch and tell people how you wanted to give up. And you change that mentality and you are killing it in our Bubba Tunde. Massive inspiration to me as well as Mo Gilligan. Um, I love them. I love them completely. Um, what did you want him to do on the couch? Big man, you got right, to then. watch the way <laughs> you speak to me. Right, bro. <laughs> so while we're talking about comedians. It sounds big weird, up, it sounds crazy. Big up Kane Brown, yeah. He is hilarious. Kane bro. is, he's been he's hilarious though. so funny blood and like he is just like anytime i've ever seen him he's just it don't even seem like he's just prepared he's just catching joke with the crowd like he's so fucking good at it bro Kane he's Brown's so amazing. sick 
He's literally one of the most underrated comedians. Of, cause yeah. Because he's not. He's one that hasn't reached the commercial circuit. Nah. But but he's he's a bit raw. Yeah. But I like that. So I I hope that like because I'm obviously I know that Mo and Kane and obviously they would have come across each other and whatever. But I would like to see them in some way work together in some way, shape or form. Because I think Kane is like, he's just incredible. He's very funny, man. So, super proper joke. Not him, be, no. No, no. Not him. No way. Kind of looks like Ben White. But, um. On White. Put com- comedian. Maybe we get him on the couch, actually. Do you know what? That guy's actually the same complexion as Beyonce in our last photo. But anyway, everyone, have a good time, man. Yeah, this brother. Oh, he's same, so he's funny. funny. He's a proper joker. Um, all right, listen, anyway, thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, love, guidance.